If you are standing at sea level and if your eye level assume at 1.75 meter above the ground, then you can see roughly 4.7 km or 2.9 miles. There is a simple formula to calculate it. Distance equal to square root of 2RH plus HS square, where R is the radius of the earth approximately 6371 km and H is the height of the observer. But there is more. If we consider the atmospheric refraction, then we need to multiply that distance with 1.06. So considering everything, we can see a distance up to 5 km or 3.1 mile if we are standing at sea level with our height at 1.75 meter. And this is statute mile, not nautical mile. Isn't it amazing how the atmospheric condition can extend our view a little bit farther? Talking about atmosphere, do you know that we can see the sun even before it rises and well after it sets? If you are referring to Almanac for sunrise and sunset, you can see that the sun is rising well before the actual given time and setting well past the time that it is given for setting. So how much time we are looking at? Roughly about four and a half minutes. Due to the refraction in the atmosphere, we can see the sun above the horizon when in fact the sun is about two degrees below the horizon. Talking about sunrise and sunset, do you know that the darkness does not appear as soon as the sun sets? Before the sun rises and after the sun sets, the atmosphere goes through three different transition zones between daylight and darkness. First, there is a civil twilight. During this time, the sun is between 2 to 6 degrees below the horizon. The sky is bright during sunrise and reddish during sunset. The stars will not be visible except perhaps few bright stars. Then there is nautical twilight. This is the time when the sun is between 6 and 12 degrees below the horizon. Horizon is still visible with dark reddish glow and the upper sky takes a deep blue hue. Most stars will be visible during this time. So this is a good time if you want to take the altitude readings from the horizon to any stars. Lastly, there is the astronomical twilight. During this time, the sun is between 12 and 18 degrees below the horizon. The reddish glow in the horizon is replaced by a deep blue and the upper sky takes a darkest blue or a very dark tinge. Horizon is not visible, but there will be some scattered light in the atmosphere. And when the sun slips 18 degrees below the horizon, true night falls. If you want to know more, I suggest you visit this site on your screen. I'll have the link below in the description. Coming back to our distance measuring subject. When you observe a distance with your total station, does the laser light from the total station go straight from the source to the target or does it follow the curvature of the earth? The laser does bend with the gravity and the curvature of the earth. But it is so minuscule that it is completely negligible. But if you are doing experiments like gravitational wave detection, then this small amount can be very significant. For everyday survey measurement, we have to assume that the laser light does not bend due to gravity and take the curvature, but it follows a straight path. Having said that, we need to consider the bending of the light due to atmospheric refraction. Standard atmospheric refraction coefficient is around 0.13. So how much refraction error we are looking at if we measure a straight 1 km distance? The formula for refraction error is d square divided by 7.2 r multiplied by 0.13 where d is the distance in meters and r is the radius of the earth in meters. So refraction error over a distance of 1 kilometer will be around 18 millimeter. 
that doesn't sound much but over the distance this 18 mm will build up and if you are doing any construction then this small error can be a catalyst for a complete failure or a resounding success this refraction coefficient can be calculated from the atmospheric data like temperature pressure and humidity most modern proto stations have sensors inbuilt in them but if that is not the case then you have the option to input the real time data that is pressure humidity and temperature so here is what you should do regular and periodic proto station calibration number 2 use barometer thermometer and hygrometer to have the real time data that's all i have for you today be good ask questions and always learn at least one thing every day stay curious and i'll see you soon